Please welcome Microsoft Senior Software Thanks, Development guys. Engineer, Technical Evangelism and Development, kind of Jim Zimmerman, and Red Hat Lead Developer Evangelist for OpenShift Online, Steve Pausty. Greetings, everyone. Thanks for being here. We're super excited to be showing this demo to you. The goal of today's demo is to show you how you both, as dev and ops, you are actually benefiting from how our partnership together. Yeah, and if you remember last year, we showed SQL Server running in a container inside OpenShift. And everybody's like, no way. How that really works? So, but today, we're going to show you something even better. So, so let's go to the demo. So on Tuesday uh, in the keynote, Red Hat showed how easy it is to lift and shift a legacy Java app into a container in OpenShift. So everything we're going to show you today is running in OpenShift on Azure with fully integrated support. And of course, this could run anywhere OpenShift runs, on-prem or in the cloud. But today, we're doing it on Azure. So. Right. Yep. So uh, I got this deployed using an ARM template and an Ansible installer script. So just the same way you would install this everywhere. And there's our master and our node, and it's all running in Azure. But we've kind of seen that before. Let's move on to something more, a little bit more exciting. Yeah, so if you remember, the DayTrader app is an enterprise Java app uh, talking to MySQL, right? So let's start with modernizing the persistence layer. Maybe we could swap out MySQL with SQL Server. Sounds like a great idea. Uh, let's go back to the DayTrader app. Uh, hello, this is the 90s calling. We'd like our web app back. All right, so we're log going to log into DayTrader. Beautiful. As a user. And then we're hitting against the SQL Server da database to show any of this stuff to you. Let's go ahead and look at this user's portfolio. They are obviously a brilliant individual with their investment in Red Hat shares. So how do I know this is really connected to SQL, though? Oh, so much for the nice partnership. Already we're doubting Thomas, or well, doubting Jim, as the case may be. <laughs> so to prove it to my friend Jim here, I'm actually going to use uh, OpenShift port forwarding. So I'm going to port forward from this local machine into that running MySQL um, <laughs> that SQL hey. Server container running on OpenShift. And so now my, my machine thinks it's actually talking. It actually is talking to that SQL Server instance. I'm going to open SQL Server Management Studio. There's our database on the left-hand side. I'm going to do a new query. And I'm going to say select star from holding. Love that autocomplete. And I execute that query. And there you can see it executed directly against that SQL Server database back here running in OpenShift. Right? So that's that container running in OpenShift. Awesome. So the reason this worked is with our newly open source JDBC driver, which allowed it to talk to the app, right. we also published it to Maven. You published that JDBC driver to Maven? Yep. Java devs, can I get a hand on Maven? <laughs> yeah, Maven! Woo! <laughs> Believe it or not, that was one of our PMs that built that. One of your PMs actually put that in there? Yeah. Oh, give him a hug and a kiss from me. So that's a good start, right? So we showed something for the SQL DBAs. And, but I'd like to know how we get the .NET devs to come on board. Uh, well, how do you attract any dev? It's with shininess and microservices. So what we're going to do now is spin up a microservice inside of OpenShift. All I have to do, this is a normal .NET uh, application. You can see look, that right here. I'm going to clone this out of the Git repo. Go over to OpenShift, add to project, pick my handy .NET builder here, pick the version I need, select it, give it a name, winning, because that's all I ever do, and then go ahead and put in the Git URL. And from there, we've actually started the process of building that container. And just so that you my doubting friend Jim here, I don't want to be doubted this time. I know where he's coming from. So I'm going to actually show the .NET build happening in real time behind us. So that's the .NET build happening there. Um, that, for those not .NET developers, that's NuGet. So that's Microsoft's way of inflicting Maven pain on .NET developers. Um, and then what you saw with that Visual Studio code is that was standard Visual Studio code. So I, when I was writing this app, I wrote some of it in Visual Studio on my Windows box. I wrote some of this in VS Code on my Linux box. And sometimes when I was modifying some of the pages, I even used Nano. I avoided those other two IDE editors, because I like to avoid religious wars. And then what we're doing is the .NET build is finishing up here. What's going to happen is this image, this container image, is now going to get pushed into the Docker registry integrated inside of OpenShift. OpenShift will see that that image is finally there, and then proceed to push that out and deploy it. So I, as a .NET developer, I never even needed to know that containers were involved in the process. I mean, I know I got the benefit, 
But I didn't have to do any builds or anything like that. I just gave my source code, and away it went. So it looks like it's finished. This is the part where I get to show you how an awesome developer I am. We'll hit that rest endpoint. <laughs> really awesome developer. <laughs> so awesome that I got an application not available message. There we go. Yep, a rest yeah, endpoint. Awesome. Wasn't quite there yet. <laughs> OK, thank you for those people who understand the rest endpoint. Wow, rest endpoint, Steve, come on. Yeah, I'm That's sorry. not really that exciting. OK. But what is great here is that Java and .NET can coexist in the same pane of glass that OpenShift provides, which our joint customers use both code bases. We all know that, right? So yeah. why don't we show some business value, like maybe add a Skype bot? Huh. Skype bot? How did you know that I would have a Skype bot ready for you to go? So we've got a Skype bot ready here to go. Remember that stock portfolio of that other user? We're using that .NET service now, and that REST endpoint, to allow there to be a Skype bot talking into it. And what we're going to do is we're going to set it up and ha monitor that user's portfolio using the Skype bot. So while I set it up, I'll let Jim explain some more of what we're doing. So wait, you're going to manipulate the star? <laughs> Shh, not, not yet, not yet. <laughs> so our team extended the app by creating a Skype bot using the Microsoft Bot Framework and Azure Functions, which is our serverless uh, experience in Azure. And to visualize how this is working, so we have the Skype bot talking to this new microservice that we just deployed, which is talking to the SQL Server container running inside of OpenShift. Right, so what I just did was I set the, the lower limit for that user when they want to get notified, and now I'm going to set the upper limit. So they're gonna, we have an upper and lower limit. And now, since that stock portfolio that's sitting there, the bot's now watching my portfolio, it's about 137,000. Since that portfolio belongs to my parents, um, they're going to take advantage of their great insider, I mean, intuitive knowledge about what we were going to be showing in our demo here today. And I'm going to show you the front end that we can use to manipulate, may you say, update stock prices as appropriate. So given the press release that's going to come out, obviously, after Jim and I do this kind of work, um, we're, going to have, we're going to have a stock price that's going to go to millions of dollars per share. So as soon as I update that stock price, that portfolio might have increased in value. And if we go back to, that, to Skype, you can see that the bot has award, told my parents, time to start your own rocket company. Your, your portfolio is now worth $137 million. Wow, can I borrow some money? <laughs> <laughs> well, that demo is great, but you know, not everything's just buzzwords, right? Right, exactly, so. it's true. You know, so what, what would we do with like legacy .NET apps, like we were doing with legacy Java apps? Is there anything that, that we can do for them to benefit? Oh, I just happen to have something right here for you, Jim. What a great friend you are. So what we're going to show right now, back in the same project that was running the Java legacy application, that was running the brand new .NET microservice, we're going to actually spin up IIS. Right? And so IIS does not run on Linux yet. So this, when I'm spinning up these containers, I am going to be using OpenShift to spin up containers running on a Windows server. So Windows containers running on a Windows server. So I pick IIS server. So how did you get this to happen, though? Is this like this OpenShift origin? Yeah. Like, yeah this is, so this okay. is, I should preface that. Sorry, I get so excited that this is actually the benefits of both Microsoft and Red Hat being part of the Kubernetes community. Right? What I'm showing you now, this is the first time you're seeing this in public. This is actually upstream work that has been coming out of the Kubernetes to show how we can actually orchestrate and schedule Windows containers running on a Windows server. So there's my win. I'm getting ready to start IIS. I say create. And if I go back here, you can see we're actually scaling up or spinning up a new container that's actually running on a Windows server. Can you scale it up, too? Oh, suddenly you're like, you believe me on everything I do? Uh, <laughs> hold on a second. Let's actually prove to you, because I don't want to hear about this later, that there is something else going on. I'm going to go now into the terminal on that container. Oh, everybody's favorite command prompt, DOS. Woo. So there, I just did a dir. I can do a system info. If I type it correctly. And there, you can see that this machine actually is on a Windows. It's got the path the wrong way and everything. So let's go back now and actually scale this up like Jim asked for. So again, what's happening here is OpenShift is talking to a Windows server and telling it to scale up another Windows container. Wow. 
So what we just saw here was SQL Server Container, yep. an enterprise Java app, a .NET microservice, a Skype bot, yeah. and an IaaS app running in Windows Container. You betcha. All but in OpenShift. That's right. OpenShift was enabling all of this. So what we also showed you today was the freedom and choice to de de develop and deploy where and when you want to. Right? So this was about making it so it's no longer a question of Microsoft or Red Hat. It's now Microsoft and Red Hat. Your tools, your way, you're, you're welcome. welcome. Thanks, Thanks. everyone. <laughs>